Hello, everybody, and welcome to the third of our quarantine episodes for Classical Pairings. I am your host, Nick Johnson. We've been doing a couple of these episodes, unlike how we normally do. Normally, I would be sitting in a bar, sipping on drinks with some fantastic business leaders and musicians in the city. We can't really do that right now, so we've decided to do just a few of these episodes to check in on some of the local businesses and musicians here in Indianapolis. Uh, this is actually the last one we're going to do of these, so the next episode you hear... Um, and in this series, we'll jump back a few months and be a little bit pre-quarantine, actually. So it might be just a little odd, but um, we'd already recorded some amazing episodes, so we're still going to release those. Uh, but today we're going to have a fantastic discussion about what it has been like um, dealing with um, COVID-19 in Indianapolis and from both the musical angle and the restaurant and butcher and all sorts of other different angles, all the things that you're involved with, Corey. So how about, uh, before we go into that, I'll just have both of you introduce yourself, if, if you're all right with that, so that I don't mess anything up. Mark, would you mind introducing yourself first? Sure. I'm Mark Ortwine. I'm the assistant principal bassoonist and contrabassoonist of the Indianapolis Symphony Orchestra. Um, I've been in the orchestra 18 years now. I play um, a lot of saxophone around town, mm -hmm. too, so a lot of people have seen me play with Bands like Bizarre Noir, my shirt here. Um, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and you're you're a member of the you're a member of the All Bassoon Rock Group too, right? Oh yeah, Rocky yeah. Bassoon. Yeah. So um, one of <laughs> the founding members of Rocky Bassoon. So we've been playing hard rock shows all over the place with our with mm -hmm. our electronic electrified bassoons, I should say. Yeah. <laughs> so, so awesome. Yeah. Well, that's fantastic. <laughs> well, Corey, can you go ahead and introduce yourself? Sure. Um, my name is Corey Cook. I work at Goose the Market and Smoking Goose. Um, one of those stories where they just fed me once and I never went away kind of a situation. <laughs> <laughs> um, the, the market up at 25th in Delaware uh, is about 12 and a half years old. We're going to celebrate our lucky 13th anniversary this, uh, this fall. And I've been there for a little over 12 years, so almost since the beginning. Wow. Um, things have really changed um, in the city, in the food scene, of course, in the market as well. But it's just been... Gosh, I feel incredibly lucky to be able to to be a part of it and kind of grow with the company and grow with the city and just bringing everybody to the table. It's been so, uh, super rewarding, that's for sure. Yeah. So this is not at all the necessarily the question, but this is a question that me and pr probably other people in the city have. What exactly is the relationship between Goose the Market and Smoking Goose? There's so many geese in the city. Keeping them okay. all straight. <laughs> got to keep the okay. gaggle together. It's true, yeah. Okay. So the, the original... You got to separate goose, the smoking ones, though. So. <laughs> That's, That's right. right. <laughs> That's right. We have a smoking section and a non-smoking section for the geese. Yeah. No, 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 no. So the Goose the Market is the original goose of Indianapolis. Um, it's named after uh, the owner, Molly Ely. Uh, she and her husband, Chris, opened it uh, almost 13 years ago. And Molly's nickname as a kid was Goose. She was the youngest mm. in her family. Um, she was the caboose following brother and sister around. Um, but there was some lost in translation, some growing up. And um, so, and so her <laughs> sister couldn't quite get caboose out, and she became goose, and the name just stuck. So she's not only the owner and the manager of the market, she is the namesake as well. Mm. And so it was um, cool. about nine years ago now that uh, Goose the Market grew into Smoking Goose. And okay. so we're using a lot of the same farmer relationships that we were able to build um, and some of those same recipes that Chris and Molly created behind the counter at that neighborhood market. Um, so mm. now you can find smoking goose, bacon, sausages, salumi, mm. hams, over 40 different types of cured meats, so charcuterie, um, that we make right in downtown Indianapolis. And you can literally see them from L.A. to Brooklyn, Minneapolis to San Antonio. We're in, wow. we're in all 48 lower states right now. That's fantastic. And yeah, and both of these customers can go into, or I mean, not right now, maybe during, but like in normal, like non-pandemic times, people can go into both of them. Absolutely. You're okay. absolutely right. Uh, so the market is open seven days a week. Um, right now, we're only doing pre-order, no contact pickup and delivery. Um, mm -hmm. Of course, we hope that that will change. We're definitely reevaluating every week. Um, but even though we love great food and drink, it means nothing without people. So the customers mm -hmm. and staff and our farmers are really the priority. So reevaluating every week, definitely stay tuned to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter feeds as we're you know, providing updates. We can't wait to have people back in the shop again. I mean, that's what mm -hmm. keeps it alive. That's what makes everything mm -hmm. worthwhile, that's for sure. Fantastic. So the market is open seven days a week um, normally. 
And mm -hmm. then uh, Smoking Goose uh, just this past fall opened Public Smokehouse. Um, and so very tragically, shortly yeah. after opening Public <laughs> Smokehouse, we had to take the public out okay. <laughs> of, the, of the smokehouse. Yeah. Okay. Um, and so there we are doing uh, no contact pickup Monday through Saturday. Um, but then hopefully soon we'll be able to open that space back up to the public again. Kind of think of a public smokehouse as like the Goose Pro Shop. Uh, so okay. it's where like we as butchers kind of get to um, experiment, play with things, mm. whatever we're inspired with, whatever's in season, whatever mm. the farmers are excited about. Um, this is the place to go to really get to kind of get in on the ground floor of like recipes that we're testing, techniques that we're trying out. Um, plus, it's as if you are a chef. So when you buy from Smoking Goose Public Smokehouse, it's uh, all wholesale pricing. So again, okay. it's as if you're a chef or a caterer, wow. you really get to take advantage of some really good prices on there too. So mm -hmm. uh, so right now, Smoking Goose, we're just doing online orders. It's uh, shop.smokinggoose.com. Um, you can pick out, again, there's all kinds of seasonal stuff, 4th of July coming up. So definitely mm -hmm. check out some specials that we've got coming out for that. Mm -hmm. um, and then you just put everything in your cart and we'll either ship it to your door or you can come and we'll drop it in the back of your trunk and away you go. Okay. Well, we are going to be sampling a few products um, later from Smoking Goose. And uh, I actually, I mean, I, so I, I can attest to the, the order when the pandemic started I was, you know, planning my nest, and so I got on SmokingDeuce.com and spent $150 on meat, and I ate all of it, and it's fantastic, and I need to order a bunch more. I suggested you guys as a guest because I was out of mustard, and so we went ahead yeah. and did an episode mostly so I could get mustard. Um, I've been putting that stuff on everything the past couple of days. Isn't it amazing? It's I haven't so had good. it yet. Because so I, good. We, I've been out for a week, and I'm waiting so that, you know, the... The listeners can experience me tasting the mustard because oh, that's what people it. come here for is, is reaction to me you, eating mustard. At least I assume that's what they come here for. <laughs> so, all right. So, um, Mark, I've, I, I have a, uh, a, a question for you. So I have seen you play multiple types of music in multiple venues and all of a sudden that has all stopped. I mean, I've seen you in the symphony. I've seen you at Square Cat. I've seen you right. at, at many other places. Um, and... How have, I mean, how have you been dealing with the shutdown of all of these performance opportunities? Well, at, at first, it, it's actually, it's kind of exciting in a way to get time off that I usually mm -hmm. don't have off. So um, I've been going through old etude books and um, mm -hmm. like I haven't been playing much flute and clarinet for years. And I did an arrangement of Sounds of Silence where I played, you know, solo flute, clarinet, bass clarinet. What did I, bassoon, soprano sax, tenor sax, and then my electronic uh, wind instrument also. <laughs> it's like, and I hadn't played that for years. <laughs> so, right. you know, so it's yeah. been really good, good in that respect. I'm making lots of bassoon reads. Any double reed player, <clears throat> oboe and bassoon players, one of the biggest things that we do is make damn reads. <laughs> All the time, we're making reads. Um, so, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. so um, I've been just making tons of reads you know, stocking up. So, um, you know, mm -hmm. that respect has been really good. I've been doing lots of different projects of recording again myself, uh, my jazz group. I've trying to do one every couple of weeks where we're doing a collaboration, the, the mm -hmm. musicians of the symphony of the Indianapolis symphony. We yeah. have our own mm -hmm. Facebook page actually. Yeah. Um, yeah. we've done a couple, couple pieces where we did that, the whole collaboration thing. And, uh, yeah. and like I you said, I'm, I've been so busy where I'm playing my yeah. weekly stuff with the orchestra and then I'm playing at mm -hmm. Ashton Elm Cider Company once a month and, oh, very mm -hmm. cool. uh, and, um, DVA Brewery once a month, I was playing at the Fountain mm -hmm. Square Brewery, you know, so, um, mm -hmm. so yeah, it's, it's, it's different and certainly miss playing with people yeah. and for people <laughs> live. So I, yeah, I've heard a lot of artists talk about how. That at first it, there was sort of a sense of like now there's the time I can kind of do all these projects, I can explore all these right. techniques, and I can kind of get my chops back on a different instrument, like uh, like on a double that I don't normally play, but I want to have back in my right. like in my arsenal. But mm -hmm. then at some point, just the stamina of that just wears out, and you know, if you don't I'm have done, anything to, I don't feel yeah. like playing right. flute scales today. <laughs> right, right. Because <laughs> we're so used to having the next gig that we're prepping for. Right. And if we don't have that, right. yeah, it can be hard to maintain that sort of energy. Mm -hmm. um, There's something are, about too, I think like 
and I'm tell me if I'm going down the wrong path here too, but this parallel between like cooking and playing music, when you get to a, a professional level of doing those things, a major part of it is doing it for other people. Right. And that whole chunk mm -hmm. has just been removed. Um, yeah. So I totally feel right. you that idea of, um, of staying inspired, staying dedicated, um, you know, you dedicate your life to this kind of activity. And then a huge part of it is, is taken away. And it, right. Yeah. So Corey, can you tell, I mean, you're, you're not at all going down the wrong path. In fact, this show is literally about how similar, how similar in some ways restaurateurs and like drink makers are to musicians about providing for community and entertaining and all those sorts of things. Um, can you talk a little bit about my, what, what's been your experience and during this pandemic? Oh, sure. Or, um, it's, I guess Goose um, is kind of in a unique position in that our staff, we are cooks, but at Smoking Goose, we also work with a lot of cooks. Um, so we're sort of, we're producing ourselves, mm -hmm. but we're also selling to and partnering with and sourcing and providing for a lot of other chefs not just in India, but across the country too. Um, and so that network I think has really um, tightened up. You know, there's always been, which I'm sure there's been in the orchestra and bands and musicians, that same kind of connection um, where, you know, you're kind of in the trenches together. <laughs> right. And uh, you know, when things change, mm -hmm. you still have that core group, you know, to really rely upon. Um, and so getting to, you know, if we can't have the audience, so to speak, we can't have, you know, the folks in the seats that we're playing for or cooking for, you mm -hmm. know, we know that we can rely on, on folks that are comrades, you know, folks that are in it at the same mm -hmm. time too. Um, so that's mm -hmm. been great. <laughs> you know, that's been definitely mm -hmm. a huge comfort. Absolutely. Um, it's been, uh, it's been especially a comfort, you know, when we're seeing so many heartbreaking stories about some places that are, are not going to be opening back up again. Right. Mm -hmm. Um, or, you know, are going to be opening up, but not in the same iteration that they were originally conceived, um, you know, and, that, and that, that has nothing to do with the staff or the people that patronized it or mm -hmm. <laughs> the, the food or the music or the menu or the, you know, the list of the playlist. Um, it just has everything to do with these kind of external circumstances. Um, so right. that's been that's been heartbreaking. That's been hard. Um, but then on the other right. hand, there's been some grassroots folks. I mean, even, uh, you know, Goose customers who will add a staff tip uh, to their online order because um, they know, you know, that we're all kind of in this together. Right. They know that we're all struggling. Or uh, I remember a while ago when the uh, fed, federal government was shut down and the air traffic controllers were still having to work. Um, and, you know, a lot of those folks are, are regulars at Goose. Um, you know, they'll pop in on their way to a shift to grab something to eat and, you know, we got to know them really well. And so we, you know, made up a, a bunch of food and just shipped it out to them um, and just said, you know, thanks, have lunch on us. Um, and I think it was maybe the second day that we were, that we had to be closed to the public, um, that the air traffic controllers called and said, hey, we want to place a huge order. We just remember <laughs> you guys say, you know, send in food to us and we want to mm -hmm. return the favor to you guys oh, too. That's nice. So yeah. seeing those stories of folks that, you know, might not otherwise be connected, you know, Air yeah. traffic control and chefs, like <laughs> not a lot of, of circles that combine with those two. Um, but in the end, you know, mm -hmm. everybody eats. We really have more in common. You know, everybody right. <laughs> finds finds yeah. beauty in the music. Everybody has stuff that they enjoy that's inspiring. And so that has really been, you know, there's been lots of silver linings yeah. coming through this as well. Yeah. Have you had opportunities, do you feel like, at, at Smoking Goose, for like creativity to try new recipes to try new i mean i don't really know like how someone comes up with a sausage <laughs> that's, that's <laughs> not, nothing i would have ever considered how do you invent a sausage recipe but have you like been able to try to come up with some new oh, sorts yeah. of recipes for things like that i mean are there going to be like exciting new things on the menu in the fall or something oh absolutely and <laughs> okay. uh, and i mean mark i'm sure you know you come across this as well it's definitely um you know, the inspiration is when you get to uh, just kind of improvise. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know, if you right, play right. the same song every day or once a week, every week, forever, you know, it, we would all die a little bit inside. 
Um, and so, uh, so yeah, absolutely. We were always getting to experiment, always getting to try new things. And, uh, you know, we take our inspiration from those raw ingredients, which are always changing. So depending mm -hmm. on what's in season, on what the farmers are excited about, that they're bringing things mm -hmm. to us, um, you know, what we're hungry for, um, the holidays, you know, literally every week we're coming up with three different sausages uh, at Goose the Market um, that the meat mongers behind the counter literally <laughs> improvise. You know, what do we have that's delicious and we're excited about? Let's make up a new recipe. Um, and so, yeah, it's, it's like literally every day there's a new recipe coming out of the kitchen. Um, wow. And, you know, okay. some of them uh, I think folks wish would come back by popular demand. So we definitely listen mm -hmm. to folks, you know, when they comment on social media or, you know, when they're in the shop or they're on the phone and they say, hey, you remember that one sausage that Kevin made? Like my family loved it. Can you guys bring it back? Just let me know. I mean, that's the ultimate compliment. You know, mm -hmm. if folks want you to play that tune again, <laughs> yeah. that, that's right. an amazing yeah. sign right there, too. So, yeah. yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There's always something different. We're always hungry mm -hmm. for the next thing. Yeah. <laughs> Literally. So, Mark, do you think? <laughs> Literally. <laughs> yeah. Mark, do you think when live shows come back, are we going to, is there going to be an influx of creativity? Is it going to go too far? Is there going to be a bunch of people that got way too into their pedal boards over... <laughs> <laughs> over corona and now the, I, mean, well, I don't know I like so. what do you what do you foresee and then like i don't know whenever we can start going to live shows again well i mean it depends i'm mean, the symphony is going to be doing what the symphony does yeah. um although programming could change certainly i know some mm -hmm. other orchestras are going to to some smaller groups some doing like more mozart and haydn um, okay so, so they the, can have so little the spread out little smaller orchestra right yeah okay. um and so everything's up in the air. We, we don't know yet. Um, as far as the other groups, um, mm -hmm. yeah, I still, I've got some, I've got some pedals. I still haven't play, even played with <laughs> yeah. sitting at home <laughs> that I need to spend some time with yeah. um, and more looping stuff. So I can do a little more stuff by myself too. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I think there'll be a little more of that. Certain people mm -hmm. are, have more time to experiment right now. Mm -hmm. So I, I can't get, can't wait to get back to playing, but we'll, we'll see how it all, all turns out, you know? Yeah. I never even thought about that before that, especially as part of, um, an ensemble, you have to socially distance even while playing. Uh, so just like mm -hmm. you said, you'll have to do like the orchestra right. will do small ensemble pieces. Just physically, they can only fit so many musicians on the stage right. at one time. Right. Yeah. Right. Well, or if somebody's sick, just don't, you know. Don't come in, please. <laughs> right. So, right. and I, it, yeah. I think it'll just get to that. It's otherwise, we're not going to be able to function. You know. Mm. Do you feel like there will be more um, outdoor venues, more outdoor concerts? Well, I don't know. I mean, our our whole summer program was uh, has been canceled. Um, oh right, for at, at least the you know on the at Prairie. Prairie. Okay. Yeah. Uh, for this summer, but. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. I'm hoping at least the, like my jazz stuff playing in, you know, at the, at the breweries and different things that mm -hmm. we can get some things set up. We are playing outside or, you know, hopefully we can get some things worked out that way. Yeah. Well, normally I come up with some sort of a good segue when I get hungry or thirsty, <laughs> but now like this conversation is just getting sad. And so I just want comfort food. And so, <laughs> you know what? I think let's have some sausage and mustard and maybe that'll make us feel a little bit true. better briefly. So <laughs> we've been, so I, I yeah, let, let's just pretend I said something clever to get us to this. Um, we, it, that uh, was clever. I feel like sausage so, and mustard soothes the soul. That's yeah, true. It, it, exactly. That and that's right. all I need a little, a little, a soul soothing. So how about, so we, we were, we were all given little care packages, uh, from Goose the Market that get, that included, uh, well, I'll, I'll let you, maybe we'll go get our food and we'll come back and you can tell us. Yeah, uh, these totally. are all things that people can order to get at home. Absolutely. Um, so Mark yeah. and I cooked it earlier and it's been sitting in other rooms I mean, at different houses, obviously, but so it's, it's waiting <laughs> and, and, and I can smell it and I need to go get it. So mm, we will our secret be secret marketing technique is just the aromas drifting exactly. through the house. Right yeah. There. <laughs> yeah. Like. So we will be uh, right back with some food. All right, we are back now. I have a, a delicious plate of Smoking Goose food in front of me. 
um, a couple different types of things that we're going to try. We're going to come up with some music that we think pairs with it. I have, uh, you, I, I'm sending our producer a couple pictures. So I hope you can kind of see what we're looking at here. Um, we'll put a list up also of what we've got. Um, I have an extra dollop of this mustard that I'm so excited to dig into with these sausages. <laughs> so can you go ahead and tell us while, why we start coming up with music that we think pairs, uh, what exactly yes, it is that we're, absolutely, we're working for on sure. Here. We've got a couple of different meat treats that we make at Smoking Goose and then a drink pairing and a condiment pairing too. Um, that's kind of one of the things that I love about Goose the Market is that it really is a one-stop shop. You can literally get everything for the entire meal, including your drink pairings and desserts. So it's a really cool way to kind of put everything together on one plate. Um, one of the, the meat treats that we picked out for y'all is um, brand new. It's one that we just released. Um, this is our hot smoked Wagyu beef bologna. So this is like... Um, bologna all grown up <laughs> this is, this is a uh, wagyu beef um so it's uh it's one of the four breeds of cow that are uh, wagyu um, and these are raised on pasture in ohio so in our neighboring state um, and then we blend those with mace white pepper um, and we put this beautiful honeycomb casing on the bologna and so uh, as it as it hot smokes then uh, it takes the form of that casing and that makes those beautiful sort of petals that mm. are all the way around mm. the outside. So that really cool shape mm -hmm. that it comes down to. Um, but it's not just looking at it. It's what mm. it tastes like that's really important. Um, so it has a little bit of sweetness from the hot smoking, but then that super traditional um, kind of sweet spice flavor, cinnamon, nutmeg, allspice coming through in there. Um, but the, the beef is really uh, the predominant flavor, which I think it should be. I mean, these are really well-raised animals, and so... Our job as a butcher is really just not to mess up what the farmer is doing, basically. <laughs> um, and so that is the flavor that I think really comes through the most on these guys, too. It's great, um, mm -hmm. just straight up. I mean, this is like mm -hmm. me with a container of pimento cheese in one hand and a slice of Wagyu bologna in the other, just going <laughs> to town over the sink. <laughs> yeah. Um, but you can definitely cook with it, um, you know, take it to fried eggs rimming it inside mm -hmm. um, your mac and cheese. It makes the best grilled cheese ever. You kind of fry it so the edges get a little bit crispy. Mm. Um, all kinds of things okay. that you can do with this guy. It's delicious. I'm, do, really I'm doing like the it. egg thing here also. That I, nice. I can definitely say it's very good. I did the your suggestion of an, of an egg in a hole. And so I just cut a hole in it and fried an egg in the middle of it, which I, I'm Brilliant. assuming that's what you meant. And, um, that's perfect. And dipped in the mustard. I mean, any, anything oh dipped gosh. in this mustard is good, but this is especially good. <laughs> Chef, you're hired. Done. I know. <laughs> I've had it three different ways so far. Oh, nice. I had to have a piece That's just right. as is, a little Perfect. bit of mustard on it. Yeah. And then I threw one, a piece on the grill earlier today and had that. Ooh. It was delicious. Mm. And then also in a, in a sandwich with some cheese and a little a little bit more of the mustard. I love the mustard Perfect. by the way. Yeah. I need like a, a couple <laughs> cases, a couple cases of that stuff. <laughs> We can buy in bulk. It's an option. It's definitely an option. <laughs> yeah, it's okay. fantastic. What do you mean by hot smoking? You said it's hot smoked. Is that something you said? What does that mean? Hot smoking versus cold smoking. Um, so it has mm -hmm. to do with the temperature at which the the product that you're smoking exists inside the smoker. Um, when you're hot smoking, you're actually cooking the, the meat in this case. Um, so it's at a, a high enough temperature okay. that you're actually smoking the meat and using the the heat from the smoker to cook the product um so things like uh like this wagyu bologna um things like our smoked turkey breast um where we're actually smoking and cooking at the same time there's also cold smoking mm -hmm. um, and in that case you're really only adding the smoke as one of the flavor elements to the product um, so things like our Delaware Fireball, uh, which is a crepinette salami, so a little round mm -hmm. salami that we wrap in coal fat. It's got a, a couple of different types of peppers in it, so it'll light you up a little bit. But then balance that it's, out it's with quite the good. cold I've smoke, had it which before. adds a little bit of sweetness. <laughs> right? It's delicious, mm -hmm. isn't it? It's a good one. It's delicious. It's a really yeah. tasty one. Like our Rust mm -hmm. Belt Saucy Son, another salami. Um, this one's like a traditional kind of long link salami. We put a cold smoke on it. So after the salami ferments... Um, we get a cold smoke on there, so the, the smoke flavor is there, but then it goes mm. into the aging room to continue traditionally aging. So it never actually cooks in the cold smoke on that side, too. Yeah. Are you doing all of this at that Dorman Street location? Exactly. Exactly. Wow. Okay. Um, so you have, like, right all there. the smoking rooms or something? I don't know. That's yes, probably That can't true. possibly be the it's word, true. but... 
Okay. No, no, you actually okay. got it. No, absolutely. Um, there's a couple of different smokers okay. at, <laughs> okay. at Smoking Goose. It's true. Um, there's one uh, that's, um, I mean, you could smoke all four of us at one time in there. <laughs> it's just like a large smoking chamber. <laughs> Um, and then there's okay. a, another where we can kind of move racks in and out. So when we're doing like bellies for bacon um, or like a rack of, of hams of our city hams that are going through there, too. Um, but then we can also kind of control uh, not just the temperature. So hot smoking versus cold smoking, but then also the type of wood that we're smoking with. Um, so we're only using whole wood. Um, we're, we're not using dust or composite or any sort of fake, um, you know, synthetic um, a lot of times we'll have folks uh, who are like tending orchards um, who maybe have a blowdown tree or, you know, a storm will come through and we'll be able to harvest those. Um, so everything from persimmon wood, cherry wood, mulberry, pecan, hickory, applewood, um, you know, it really is a- another ingredient, another flavor element, you know, that we're adding to the different to the different meat treats in there, too. So there's a lot of variation, you know, just the idea of smoked um, can mean lots of different woods, cold smoking versus hot smoking. Um, you know, it's really, that's kind of goes back to that, like creativity, that sort of um, spin off, that kind of, you know, improvisation that we get to do. Um, you know, we really get to think about the smoke as a whole nother element within that too. So when someone smokes at home, like in a home grill, they're almost mm-hmm. certainly hot smoking, right? Um, you can really do both. You can absolutely do both okay. at home. Um, it really kind of just depends on on what you're looking to do. Um, certainly if you're doing, um, you know, you're looking to like smoke a chicken, you probably don't want to do a cold smoke on that one and then just sort of inspire that environment (laughs) for bad stuff. Raw chicken that smells like smoke. (laughs) (laughs) Okay. Okay. Um, but definitely, I mean, you can absolutely (laughs) put like a cold smoke on, um, on vegetables at home, which is really cool to do. Um, a cold smoke Mm. on cheeses at home, which is a really cool flavor element to kind of blend Mm. in there too. Um, but then, of course, you can absolutely hot smoke. So you can do your ribs and your chicken wings and brisket yeah. and all that good stuff, too. Mm-hmm. Okay. So, Mark, do we want to pick a piece of music as we go through this menu here? <laughs> sure. I'm so geeking out. I'm so excited about this part. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we can start with this, with the the bologna. What was Ooh, the name uh, of it again? Sorry. Oh, that's okay. This the, is our hot smoked Wagyu beef bologna. Wag, that's wagyu. a wag, that's a wag, wag. Right. And that's a type of cow. That's right. Yeah. Okay. So um, I guess in, in Japanese, uh, wa means uh, cow and gu means Japanese. <laughs> okay. And I might have those backwards. It may be the other way around, but okay. essentially it's like Japanese beef or Japanese Well, it cow. means delicious. How about That's that? right. <laughs> the whole thing together. <laughs> <right>. Bottom line. <laughs> uh, what do you think, Mark? Do you have it? Is anything coming to mind here? So, I mean, the very first thing I've thought of, I've had some Wagyu steaks before. Oh, okay. Uh, at some place. You're, you're a very cultured man. I, I'm well, impressed. I'm about that. <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, so I, I knew it was Japanese. So I re- immediately okay. I thought of um, the one movement from Mother Goose Sweet, Ravel's Mother Goose Sweet, mm-hmm. the Pagodas, is a real, yeah. real cool piece. Um, and Ravel, it's... Is just a master, master orchestrator, so yeah. yeah, pretty much everything he wrote is like he blends all the instruments in just the right way. He's just a really mm-hmm. amazing composer and, and orchestrator. So that's that's kind mm-hmm. of the first thing I thought of. I I mean I especially because that piece and there's something um, what I really like about that idea because we're taking what is kind of a kid's food. Like I don't know if if right, bologna right. is always thought of that way, but like I normally kind of think. But this is not your your granddad's bologna, <laughs> you know what I mean? Bologna and mayonnaise sandwich here. This is a very different, more mature. And so Ravel does that a lot. And so Ravel's kind of, he's a, uh, just, you know, Corey, he's sort of like a early 20th century French composer, um, a, a little beyond that. But, um, and a very much so, as Mark pointed out, he's known for his orchestration. So he's known for these very lush, beautiful musical textures. He can combine the 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 right instruments in just the right way at the right moment to create a certain effect. And in this piece, what he does, what he, in this, exactly. And in this piece, what he does is he takes kind of a sort of I mean, the mother goose. Suite. He's taking sort of childlike things and giving them this sort of more mature um, sort of taste. And then here, as, as Mark points out, we're kind of also adding in sort of a, a Japanese flavor. So I think that's kind of a neat idea. Um, so how about we just go ahead and listen to it? And so um, this, let's go ahead and listen to, this is um, 
the P pagoda movement you said yeah yeah so this is the pagoda movement from the mother goose suite by Ravel. All right, so we have been listening to the Empress of the Pagodas movement from the Mother Goose Suite by Ravel, um, pairing it here. What do you think, Cora? Do you think that Mark made a good choice to pair here with your, is it Wagyu? Is that how you pronounce it? Okay. <laughs> what struck you about it as, as somehow sort of matching the, the, the product that you guys make? Oh, well, um, uh, bonus points for the Mother Goose connection. Love that, absolutely. <laughs> um, and then also, of course, like kind of the Japanese connection, like the, the history of the breed, but then definitely like making it uh, his own, the composer kind of making it his own. That's kind of what we do at Smoking Goose as well. Um, mm -hmm. We're using old world techniques, but uh, we're not trying to replicate uh, Japan in America or Italy in, in right. Indianapolis, <laughs> mm -hmm. that we're really trying to reinterpret in a very lush um comforting, interesting, layered way, uh, something new, something different. And uh, definitely this piece reminded me of that, that sort of lush, very layered, um, very interesting, but also comforting um, mm -hmm. kind of feeling that, that mm -hmm. hopefully Wagyu bologna processes as well. I love too, <laughs> like there was this kind of timpani, I think it was, but it was another instrument that you mentioned, Nick, too. I, I don't know if it was a gong or a tam-tam. A I, gong I, or a tam-tam tam tell tam Mark might know that every once it was in a while the big percussion of... one <laughs> right right right, right. I, I would have to see it but... <laughs> it was those kind of booms in the background that just it was like baloney mm -hmm. you know <laughs> just sort of coming through <laughs> like this is what it is you know very um not mm -hmm. i mean unapologetic but like strong and lush mm -hmm. yeah brilliant mm -hmm. well and i i think that the instrument like mark was talking about the instrumentation of ravel and there's just something about it it's like the spices of cooking. I mean, it's the thing that makes everything else work properly. It's got to be in the perfect balance. And 
And Ravel is so skilled at matching all of those things, as, as Mark right. pointed out. Yeah, well, I mean, one of the most famous orchestral pieces, I think one of the best pieces, is the Pictures at Exhibition. Mm-hmm. It's, by, it's by Masorsky, but the, he, mm-hmm. that was the piano version. Yeah. And the, the one that everybody knows or, orchestrally is Ravel's mm-hmm. orchestration of it. Yeah. And he's just taken one great piece and turned it to complete masterpiece, you know. Yeah. So he's mm-hmm. he's one of the best at that. Yeah, absolutely. Well, let's um I've been patiently waiting to cut into my bratwurst here as we've been discussing this piece. So I think let's move on to piece number two. <laughs> piece number so, two. All right. Gonna, what have I got here? What am I <laughs> what is, what is what is this beautiful concoction? This is this is our Caraway and Kolsch Bratwurst. So this is uh, another brand new collaboration that we just got to do with Indianapolis's own um, Daredevil Brewing. So mm. using their Vacation Kolsch uh, along with pork, and then we did a little bit of white pepper, um, cumin, coriander blended in this one. This is a hot smoked salami. Uh, excuse me, hot smoked sausage. So this is a a pork sausage that we're actually smoking and cooking at the same time. Um, So it comes in the package fully cooked. So really super simple. All you got to do is put a sear on it if you want to do it hot. Um, You can do that on the stovetop, on the grill, even in the toaster oven if you wanted to. Um, And again, I kind of feel like it has those um, traditional comforting bratwurst flavors, but reinterpreted, kind of a a new perspective of something Mm -hmm. that folks might be traditionally you know, comfortable with in there too. Um, So, I mean, we love getting to work with, there's so many amazing producers in Indianapolis, beer, spirits, you know, jams, preserves, bakeries, of course, farmers as well. Um, So being able to work with those folks um, and kind of, you know, paying ideas off of one another um, and create something brand new with both of our products together is super inspiring and and super delicious, we hope too. This is outstanding. I have not tried this yet until that bite. Mm-hmm. And I, uh, oh, wow. You can definitely taste the caraway in it. Um, mm-hmm. That's one thing I, I noticed right away. Absolutely. Very that caraway seed comes through. Distinctive taste. Very good. Very much so, yeah. And kind of mirrored by the Kolsch flavors in there, too. It's mm-hmm. kind of like, again, that beer brat, but in a new way, a new angle. Mark, did you do this on your grill or did you do it? I did. Did you? You did. So I, I just heated it up in a skillet, and it's fantastic. But I yeah, I threw it on my new my new. <laughs> I just got a pit boss, Ooh. um, <laughs> pellet pellet smoker slash grill thing. Okay. So I've been. You got it. Threw Perfect. It, on it was there. a good there christening, there. and then pairing it with that um, Bavarian style mustard that we make ourselves too. Mm-hmm. So we're mm-hmm. using um, yellow and brown mustard seeds. And then um, fermenting them under Sun King beer. So another great beer collaboration <laughs> there. And then blending okay. the mustard in-house as well. Um, so that's one that, that... Oh, yeah. And this is the yeah, mustard yeah. we haven't been able to shut up about. I didn't know that it was, <laughs> but there was this so like, fancy thing with Sun King and all of that. This is... It's really yeah. good. I know. We all joke. We kinda, You could slather it on a brick and I'd probably put it down. It's delicious. <laughs> it's really, really good. I would believe it. I mean, I cut myself a couple pieces of bread and I just keep dipping it in. Right. Just going back to it, it's brilliant. Oh, yeah. It's one of those you can always have it in the fridge. It pairs with everything. Really good with um, sheep's milk cheeses. I like it especially mm. too. It's delicious. Yeah. Mm. So a nice I put it on pairing. my on my steak earlier too. Ooh. It was delicious. Ooh, I love that idea. It's so good. Like the heat from the steak kind of renders the mm. the mustard out a little bit too. You could just yeah. sauce yeah. it out like that. That sounds mm. delicious. Yeah. Serious. And so people can order it the mustard um, on the website, right? You don't Absolutely, have to go yeah. Okay. You got it. You, yeah, you, it's like comes in like mason jars and stuff, right? Okay. Yeah, you got it. Um, they're in nice little glass jars too, so they make a really cool gift. Um, and that's what I like too. Like especially while we're social distancing and you know traveling has become a little bit more difficult. Um, you know, you can still send a little delicious gift pack, and whether it's Indianapolis or the other side of the country, you can send a little bit of home to to folks that you miss. Or I would offer just buy a bunch of mustard yourself and eat it. Just, and, who, and who cares about those people? Just get a bunch for yourself. <laughs> hoard it. That, for themselves. Yeah, hoard okay. it. Exactly. That's what yeah. I'm going for. There's my counter argument. But uh, I like your style. This is a good thing. <laughs> you know, we're gonna no, I actually market. did give some of this mustard to my dad uh, over Christmas. I gave him that and some. Um, you guys have some terrines that are really good. Ooh, um, yes. Like like they're kind of like pates or I I don't know. 
my dad likes spreadable meats with mustard. And so that's what I gave mm. him for Christmas. And he was mm. like an eight year old getting a new toy. <laughs> he was so Aww. happy. So, yeah. And he that. lives in Missouri. So yeah, I took it to him, but all right. I'm, we're too excited about that. And this Brawlers is amazing where I know we're rambling about the mustard, but <laughs> I am surprised that like, I, I thought I was like, Oh, this is going to be a really good, this is going to be a really good Brawlers, but they're, I guess it's the caraway. I'm ignorant about a lot of things. Mm. I don't even know what that is, but it's delicious. That's all I do know. Caraway is a seed, I'm assuming? Correct. Exactly, okay. yeah. Real traditional, like, German spicing, too. Um, mm. So you find a lot of caraway okay. traditionally in bratwurst. Mm -hmm. It's one of those, like, um, all bratwurst are sausages, but not all sausages are bratwurst. Kind of an mm -hmm. umbrella situation. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, so definitely, okay. like, a trademark Germanic kind of flavor, mm -hmm. that pairing in there, too. Oh, that's good. Mark, you got an idea? There Some could music. be a million, million yeah, things. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's not like <laughs> we need well, to think fun. of a German piece of music or an Austrian piece of music I know. that we I would know. listen to while eating sausage, of which there are <laughs> thousands. Right. But, well, it's funny, though, when I pulled up to Goose, the market, to pick up my bag of goodies, um, one of the Strauss um, tone poems was on. Oh, okay. And... It had this uh, very like feel, you know, you're in, a, you're in a field, you're in the wilderness sections, mm -hmm. and I can't remember what it is. I mean, I played all the tone poems a bunch of times, and I can't, I don't know which one it is. This is know. this is Ricard, uh, not Johan. Yo, Ricard. Ricard. Yeah, okay. Ricard. Yeah. Um, okay. So I certainly thought of that, and and some of the mm -hmm. Mahler Mahler symphonies have. Okay. Because I, th I just thought of the country, especially with the caraway seed. I just thought yeah, of uh, I can see that. a little okay. more country than maybe than Brahms or something. But Yeah, because, you know, what came to mind is the, to me, it was the, the other Strauss, the Waltz one, oh, <laughs> Johann yeah. Strauss, just yeah. because I, I, I go to, to Austria most years and um, you just, you can't help but hearing waltzes there and like you just want to dance and eat a big sausage covered in mustard. But I, I think... <laughs> <laughs> These are both, you know, uh, Johann Strauss, late 1800s, uh, composed primarily in Vienna. Richard Strauss composed in a lot of different places. He worked in Vienna, but also Berlin and other places. And he also wrote all sorts of operas. Richard Strauss wrote music that he would write some of, sort of what Mark's talking about, this very sort of just country, um, kind of beautiful, approachable. But then he also wrote really sort of progressive for the time operas. Um Right, Salome right. being the most famous of those, or maybe oh, Electra. Yes. Okay. Um, Electra. But also and, and he they're, wrote... and they're not related, by the way. Johan and Ricard right. are not. There, there are two <laughs> yeah. Johans, and neither of them are related to Ricard. Um, Do you think which they is... were always getting each other's orders, like at restaurants and stuff? <laughs> Probably, I don't know. Yeah. It's the other they're... Johan. <laughs> <laughs> they're certainly yeah, they're... making music history students <laughs> fail tests occasionally. Right. I can tell you that. Right, right, right. <laughs> but um, Rick, Ricard also wrote the opening tour of the... Um, 2001 Space Odyssey. Oh, yeah. The bah, oh, right. Of bah, 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 bah. So that's Ricard Strauss, yeah. also. Right on, right um, on. So, so what, what are you thinking, Mark? Which way you want to go here? I'm going to, you're, you're the guest here. You get to. I think your suggestion of Johan's good because I, you know, something that's a little beer, more. Waltzy. Drinking beer and eating yeah. a brat, you know, having fun. Yeah. Okay. I was thinking maybe, I mean, Johan wrote so many waltzes that it's like the most famous is the blue danube um and the th these are music that you know people would dance to in vienna the waltz used to be a dance that was scandalous because you touch your partner while you're dancing it um but by the mid to 18 late 1800s was very popular and and from both the country to the highest court i was sort of thinking about and this is me just being sad because I would normally, if it wasn't, if Corona was not going on, I would be in Vienna right now teaching. Um, and it's, it's my, one of my favorite places. And literally one of my favorite things to do in the entire world is to go see an opera and right before the opera, eat a big bratwurst covered in sausage um, and drink Aww. a big beer. Um, and so I'm, I'm, I'm feeling um, Vienna sad here. So anyway, uh, there's one, the, the, the Rathaus Baltanza, um, the Rathaus Baltanza, which is the, um, the Rathaus is like city hall 
And so this is a dance that you would do. It's music that you would maybe do like in front, the Rathaus of City Hall of Vienna. And they do all sorts of festivals and parties there. I've been to a pride parade at Rothaus, uh before. They do all sorts of different things there. Um, and this is the one that came to mind for me um, as sort of city, but sort of like traditional. Uh, uh, I don't know. Do you want to give it a listen? See if you if you guys agree with me here? Sure. Right on. Yeah. All right. So this is the Rathaus Ball Tanze. Uh, this is by Johann Strauss. A nice little waltz to accompany our mustard and bratwurst. So we have been listening to the Rathaus Baltanza, uh, the City Hall Dance by Johann Strauss. I have been eating my bratwurst and dancing um, in my in my own little study here, um, which has been a lot of fun for me. Uh, perhaps the whiskey is contributing to that, but who knows? But does anybody have any any ideas? What do you think of my choice here to match with this mustard and bratwurst? So it's funny that it it started and it sounds a little bit like Blue Danube, and a yep. little bit yeah, like it the does. twenty. Yeah with a 20th century Fox movie theme, you know, the, the, does, they yeah. played at the Actually, beginning right, yeah. of all the movies, you know, I played that a million times with Jack Everly with different shows we've done, but yeah. that's so funny. It's kind of a mix of the two, but I, I love yeah. it. It's so, such a fun pace. You know? Oh, totally. It feels a little bit like, you know, you're sort of 
you're getting dinner together, you're kind of putting ingredients on the grill, mm. wondering if all your friends are going to come over, trying to mm. figure it out, and then, boom, like, the party starts. This is happening. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> when the waltz drops, or the beat right. drops, <laughs> and then you just start spinning and spinning and spinning, and you're filled with mustard <laughs> and beer, and what could be better than <laughs> Mm. perfect i love it it's perfect yeah, it's pairing. Great. well good well well, uh, well thank you and i want to thank you because i have had many a sausage in austria and many a sausage here in america and this might be like the best american sausage i've had oh um, shucks especially brother. paired make with our this, bacon with blush this, over yeah. here yeah so i, I it, will be it's... ordering some of these very soon because i really want to grill some um i'd really yeah. like right to try it yeah like, it was really good grill and yeah, really good. I love that. I think that, I mean, about music, but also about food that, I mean, mm. forget armchair traveling. This is like dining room table traveling, you know, <laughs> exactly, yeah. um, that a for the time being, that... this is what, this is what we've got right now. Right. Yeah. It has been a real pleasure to sit and enjoy this dinner and conversation with both of you, uh, during this very difficult time of the pandemic and everything else that is going on. Um, in our country i will say please definitely order some products from smoking goose and goose the market there are uh, everything we've had here is fantastic i've had probably 15 more things from your menu they're all fantastic um and if you've never had the pleasure of hearing mark play he plays basically every genre of music and he plays them all very well and so please go and hear his jazz group Whenever the chance presents itself, go hear the ISO. Whenever that can happen again, who knows when that'll be. But So thank you both so much. This has been a real pleasure. Thank you for listening. Um, from Classic Music Andy, cheers. Cheers. <laughs>